Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello. I'm Dan Armendaris, one of your TFs for Computer Science E1. Today we're going to be showing you PC BIOS settings. Now some of the reasons that you might want to update the PC BIOS settings is, well, maybe let you change some of your hardware. Uh, maybe you have to change the date and time on your computer. Um, there's a couple of reasons why, and we'll go through some of them in a minute. Uh, the first thing to do when you update your BIOS is actually to turn on your PC. When you first turn it on, uh, it, it goes through something called POST, which is the Power On Self Test. Now, in, in order to get to your BIOS, you actually have to interrupt the POST. On many computers, it's different. On this one, it's F10. On some others, it's F2. Some others, still, it's Escape. Usually, it will tell you on the screen somewhere what button to hit. So in order to go into your BIOS settings, you have to interrupt the POST. It's different in every computer. For example, on this one it's F10, on some others it's F2, and some others still it's Escape. But it'll always tell you in the lower right-hand corner, or maybe the lower left-hand corner of your screen, as it's powering on, which button to push in order to interrupt the post and go into the BIOS settings. When you do that, every computer is different in, in terms of the BIOS. This one asks us for a language. Some do not, but in this case we'll just select English. And this one has a very nice menu-based system where we can go right and left and select the various BIOS settings. Other ones may be in a more column form where you have some, some of the settings on the left side and then what their values are on the right. It all depends on your specific manufacturer and you'll want to either check with your manufacturer's instruction manual or just give it a shot yourself and see what happens. So some of the settings that we might want to change on the BIOS screen are our date and time, for example. Now you can say, well, I need to change the date. I can change the date and time in Windows. Why would I need to do that here? There are some cases when you need to set the date and time properly in the hardware in order for, for your software to work. So let's go to the, the date and time. Here it says it's about 11 o'clock on July 31st, but that's just blatantly wrong. It's really about 4 o'clock on August 31st, 2019. 87 or so. So you can see here that it says F10 to accept or escape to cancel. If I hit F10, the computer accepts it as fact, even though it's not really 1987. Or I'd be talking to you in, well, I wouldn't be talking to you in diapers, but it still was a very long time ago. Uh, some of the other settings that we can change are the, the boot order. So Usually when you start up your computer, it boots from the hard drive. That's how it boots into Windows, and that's how you start using your computer. But sometimes you may have to reinstall Windows, or you may want to boot off of a CD for another reason. Uh, and that, you can change that from here. So here it says that first, it's going to boot off of the CD-ROM drive. Second is the diskette drive. Third is the hard drive. And fourth is from the network. Now this doesn't mean that if there's no CD in the drive, that it's not going to boot at all. If it fails in one of these particular, uh, if it fails off of one particular media, it will switch to the next one and keep trying until it finds one that has a proper bootable partition. So here, this is actually set up the way I want it. But let's say I didn't want to boot off of the CD for any reason. We can use the right and left mouse buttons, or the right and left arrow keys, pardon. Uh, so first right here it says that the CD-ROM drive will boot first, then the diskette drive, then the hard drive. Now, if there's no CD in the CD-ROM drive, it doesn't mean that boot will fail. If it doesn't find a bootable sector off of one particular media, it will continue to the next one until it finds something that it can boot off of. So that's why, even if you have it in this particular order, the CD-ROM drive followed by the diskette followed by the hard drive, your computer will still boot normally. But in this case, we may want it to completely bypass the CD. So we can just move that down so that the hard drive is first, the floppy is second, and the CD-ROM drive is third. Now, if your hard drive has a valid uh, installation of Windows, then it may never boot to the CD. And, this, and some computers do come this way, so if you do need to boot off your CD, I recommend checking the boot order in your BIOS. It says F10 to accept, so we'll go ahead and accept that. 
And we can see some of the other settings. So for example, here, there's a security setting where we can set a power on password. Now this may be pretty useful if you're in a lab environment, for example, and you don't want a lot of people to get into your machine. You can set a power on password so that before uh, anybody can use your machine, they have to enter your specific password. And of course, F10 to accept. Your mileage may vary for the, for the particular save button. And we can continue on. Now, some of these options that we've talked about, the boot order, the date and time, the security, they may not be all that important to you. But one of the things that, are, that is especially interesting is that most BIOS settings programs uh, give you the ability to look at some of your system information. So right here, we can look at it. We can see that this is not the newest machine on the block, but still, it still has some kick left to it. It's a uh, Pentium 3 processor, 733 megahertz, with uh, 256 megabytes of RAM. And it gives some other information, such as the, uh, the serial number for the particular computer. Of course, different models will show you different amounts of data, but this still gives us quite a bit of information. If I just installed a new stick of RAM, for example, I want to make sure that it's, uh, that it's able to access that RAM, then it'll say if I've actually successfully completed a, a RAM installation. So we'll escape out of that. And if we keep going, we can say, well, now I've done all of the settings that I want to do. I want to save and want to continue. So usually, uh, you'll have a save option. Uh, some computers will have a save button where it says hit F10 to save, or hit escape to exit and save. It really depends. This one has a save changes and exit. So we'll go ahead and hit that. It asks if I'm sure. So when you're saving changes, you want to make sure that you either have all of your settings correct or that you left everything well enough no alone. Because there are some fairly esoteric settings that can lead to, well, your computer not powering up. But I'm pretty sure that I did everything all right because I was just setting the time and date and set a BIOS password. So I'll go ahead and save it and exit. The computer will start. So once you've saved your BIOS settings and you've restarted, you'll see that they start to take effect immediately upon restart. Right here, for example, it wants my power on password, so I'll just enter that. It tells me it's OK, and it continues boot. But what happens if I enter in an incorrect password? Let's, give, let's just give that a shot here. Let's say, for example, that my brother comes up and wants to use my computer, and I don't want him to use it after my BIOS password, he enters in, he says, OK, maybe I'll put in Dan's birthday. Oh, I didn't like that. OK, maybe another one, no. OK, maybe his name, nope. And now, after three tries, most BIOS will actually lock the computer out, just temporarily at least. You may have to restart the machine, like so. And then it will ask you for the password again, and you can enter it, and you can continue on with the boot process. Any questions? Well, I'm Dan. Thank you for watching, and have a pleasant day or evening. So we might say that, let's see, first is the hard drive. Okay. This is really difficult to use. <laughs> Hold on. I'm working on it. Where was it? No. First. No. Wow, I, have, I still can't figure this out. Okay. 
But I'm pretty sure that I did everything all right because I was just setting the time and date and set a BIOS password. So I'll go ahead and save it and exit. Your computer will restart and your new settings will be in effect upon restart. So in a few minutes, we should see that my computer now wants a BIOS password. I think it's about time to upgrade this computer, which you can see in our other videos. Oh, crap, it didn't, no bias <laughs> password. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you did save it. I don't know what was the password. Oh, there it is. Yeah, well, because it was a soft boot as opposed to a hard boot. Oh, really? That could be it. We want to do that again without me talking. Yeah. <laughs> so, any questions? Well, I'm Dan. Thank you for watching, and have a pleasant day or evening or night. <laughs>